Welcome to Home Ties, a podcast about staying connected to home, no matter where you are. The views and opinions expressed in this podcast are not necessarily those of the Wisconsin Evangelical Lutheran Synod. It's no fun being an illegal alien, and I ought to know. In the fall of 2003, my Bulgarian work permit expired, and I had no way to renew it. I got caught between a rock and a hard place, between the local church leadership and my mission board back in the U.S. They went back and forth on the issue for about a month while my family and I sat in limbo. I realized there are more serious ways to break the law than letting your visa expire. And yet, every time I approached a police roadblock or was required to present a photo ID, it made my heart race. Even though I had a signed rental contract and an address, Even though I was legitimately employed and receiving a salary, in the eyes of the government of Bulgaria, I had no business being there. And so, we packed up our belongings and quietly left the country without fanfare. American expats have many freedoms and privileges that local citizens do not. I can go right to the front of the line at the U.S. consulate. I receive regular communication from our embassy about the security situation in the country. Our government chartered private flights to repatriate Americans caught in Malawi during the pandemic's early days. I have a U.S. passport, which means that I can leave any time I want. But being a U.S. citizen doesn't exempt me from obeying local laws. I don't have the notation CD or Corps Diplomatique on my vehicle, so I must slow down for police checkpoints and stop if required. If the police officer demands to see my license, registration, and safety inspection documents, I must oblige. If he demands to see my car's warning triangle and fire extinguisher, I'd better be able to locate those items. And if he wants to check the air pressure in my tires, well, he can. And if my car is in violation of any rule, I will suffer the consequences, regardless of whether I think it's fair or not. I also must obey local traffic laws, which are significantly different enough from laws in the United States that you really ought to study them before taking the test to get your license. I've talked about that in another episode. I must not exceed the speed limit, whether it's posted or not. I must be careful to only park where it's permitted, whether there's a parking sign or not. Well, thankfully, I haven't had many run-ins with the police during the years I've lived overseas. In fact, I can say that for the most part, the police have been courteous and respectful to me. My main interactions with the law has been in negotiating the government bureaucracy in securing permission to reside in the country. What's frustrating is that there is not always agreement between jurisdictions and procedures. 
For example, before I arrived in Bulgaria, I was told that the Bulgarian government minister of religious affairs had given our organization both verbal and written assurance that I would receive a, quote, missionary visa. Now remember, this was post-communist Bulgaria in the early 90s, when both Christian mission groups and cults were rushing to get a foothold. And neither the Bulgarian people nor their government knew quite how to cope with the onslaught. The government religious affairs office was responsible for vetting legitimate groups. But the traditional Bulgarian Orthodox Church didn't really want any religious competition. And many Bulgarians felt it was their patriotic duty to remain members of the church of their forebears. Now, I knew things weren't going to go smoothly, even before I left the U.S. At the ticket counter at the airport in Chicago, the agent asked to see my Bulgarian visa. Visa? Don't you pick that up at the border? When the agent discovered my purpose in going to Bulgaria, she informed me that several missionaries had been turned back at the border, so I'd better have enough cash on hand to purchase a return ticket. Apparently, a one-way ticket is not a sign that you are a tourist. So, my wife and I and another missionary couple arrived at the airport in Sofia as tourists with 16 suitcases amongst us. Nothing suspicious here. And then, of course, the customs agent had to just open up all of our suitcases and go through them. Was he looking for Bibles or drugs? He found neither, but he did discover an English-Bulgarian dictionary in my suitcase. He asked, Are you a missionary? Well, what would you say? I could see past him to the face of another missionary waiting for me on the other side of the checkpoint. But I couldn't ask him for advice now, could I? Am I a missionary? If I say yes, I get sent on the next plane back to the U.S. If I say no, then I'm lying to a representative of the government that I'm supposed to respect. So how did I answer his question? I told him, I want to learn your language which was not a lie, but less than the full truth. Anyway, it satisfied him. My next interaction with the visa police was the following Monday when I showed up at the Department of Immigration offices. I had my letter from a top government official giving me permission to receive a missionary visa. And the local official said, no missionary visa for you. Like I said about jurisdictions and procedures not overlapping. So there I was, a new missionary, moved halfway across the globe with a three-month tourist visa to get the job done. Well, to make a long story short, I eventually found a legal way to extend my stay in the country, but not as a missionary. I had a businessman's visa, and that served me for about nine years, until a new government came to power and declared that now missionary visas would be possible. As it turned out, it wasn't the government that stood in my way, but rather people from my own organization. 
Now, in the uh, first letter of Paul to Timothy, chapter 1, verses 8 and 9, it says, We know that the law is good if one uses it properly. We also know that the law is made not for the righteous, but for lawbreakers and rebels. A Bulgarian friend once told me she viewed the law as a door in an empty field. Only an idiot would try to go through it. Everyone else would just go around it. It is human nature to view any authority that way as an obstacle, a barrier, an unpleasant formality. When you negotiate any bureaucracy, you are at the mercy of the government official who holds your fate in his or her hands. You have no leverage. You cannot force the bureaucrat to do anything. You certainly cannot appeal to the rules and say, Look, I'm doing everything I'm supposed to, so give me my visa. Instead, you are dependent on the goodwill of the person in charge. If they are disposed to help you, they will. If not, then you twist in the wind. The purpose of the visa rules, ostensibly, is to weed out those who don't belong. But someone always falls through the cracks into areas where there are no clear answers. Now, the Bible's commandments and laws are not our friend. We cannot use them to force God to do anything for us. We cannot say, hey, God, look, I'm doing everything like I'm supposed to, so give me what I'm asking for. We are dependent on the good graces of God, which is totally dependent on Christ's righteousness and not our own. The laws in the Bible do not show us how to work our way to heaven. Instead, they show that we are weeds that should be burned up. That's why every day I ask the Lord for his mercy on me, a weedy sinner, an illegal immigrant, an unfit member of his kingdom. I ask for help to use God's law properly, to apply it to myself, that I may see my own failings and shortcomings and repent of them. I ask for help to apply not only the letter of the law, but also its spirit, especially when there is no clear way forward and the choices available to you are all tinged with ethical uncertainty. I make my appeal to God in the name of his son, Jesus, my advocate and mediator, who let the full weight of God's law come crashing down on his head in my place. Jesus is why I view God's law positively, as a guide I willingly follow, and not a door in an empty field. Because of Jesus, I believe that God is using me to build up his kingdom and help his people, even in those situations where it seems like I'm walking on ethically thin ice. Because of Jesus, I am a citizen of two kingdoms the earthly and the heavenly. And I give each whatever they are due. With Jesus at my side, I understand what the law can do and what only God's love can accomplish. Now, next time on Home Ties, when Helping Hurts is the title of a book about ways that the generosity of foreigners towards the poor sometimes 
causes more harm than good. When helping hurts is an easy catchphrase to remember, but it can also become an excuse for never helping anyone. We'll see you next time.